Hello everybody, this is Alex Merced, Senior Tech Evangelist here at Dremio. And one of the videos in this series of videos is help you get hands-on and uh, try out many of the great features of the Dremio Lake House platform. Now, the Dremio platform allows us to do many things. It allows us to unify our data across many sources. It allows us to prepare that data and model that data within a semantic layer. And allows us to work with our data lake in a higher level into the level of a data lake house all within one platform basically essentially taking your data lake and making it a much higher value producing part of your data architecture but in this first video what i want to do is help you set up a dremio environment on your laptop where you can kind of get hands-on and play uh, locally on your own machine for that i have this whole Docker Compose setup right here. This repository will be linked to in the video description. I already have it cloned down here in my VS Code. And basically, once you have it cloned down, assumption is you have Docker installed. But literally, to get it up and running, all you have to do, let me clear out my terminal, is just do Docker Compose up dash D, so that way you don't have to worry about all the output. And then this will begin setting up all the different uh, containers. Okay. And we'll just give that a moment to start up all those containers. Well, that was done pretty quickly. Again, if it's the first time you're running this, it may need to download all the images for these containers. So it may take a moment. But this script allows, basically has a lot of sample data. And that sample data is provided in this mini MinIO data folder. Okay, because essentially, as you see here, there's five services, okay, that we're going to be spinning up on our laptop. So essentially, our laptop is running these actually six things. It's going to be running Dremio, so that way we can run queries against our data sources and curate those data sources and basically use that as a center of, of work. Okay, the MinIO service is going to act as our storage or our data lake, where we can store files and basically become a big repository of all our structured and unstructured data. Superset is a BI tool, which will get to in uh, one of the later videos and actually show you building a BI dashboard off the data inside of Dremio. The Spark container is really more of a, a notebook container. So it's, it's a container that runs a notebook that also has Spark. Um, we're going to mainly be using it so we can run some Python code to show you how to bring Python, uh, use Python with Dremio data. Postgres is going to be one of our data sources. We have some data that's actually being seeded into Postgres. The details of what's being seeded into the Postgres database is in this folder right here. And then Nessie is going to be our Lakehouse catalog, essentially tracking our tables on the data lake. So basically, a data lake is essentially storage. So the idea is you're storing files and you're accessing the storage layer as files with data inside of them. A data lake house is when you transform that into a more data warehouse-like interface where you interact with your data lake as a series of data warehouse-like tables with all the same kind of guarantees. Using a table format like Iceberg, Nessie is going to be the catalog that tracks those tables and allows us to bring those tables into Dremio. So that's all started. Let's actually go take a look and get all these things configured. Okay. So first, I'm wanna, what I'm going to want to do is just confirm that everything is kind of set up. So if I head over to localhost 9000, Okay, and then the admin and password, which is all determined inside the Docker Compose file, is admin and password. And you should see here that there's already two buckets inside your uh, inside MinIO. One called Data Lake. This is going to represent our data lake that has files that we've uploaded, like CSV files and JSON files. And then we have Data Lake House. This is going to be where we store our Data Lake House tables. Okay, so that's all confirmed. That's all good to go. Okay, just to make sure that everything else is working. I want to make sure that I see that the notebook is working. So that's localhost 88888. And I can see that the notebook server is running. So that way later on when we want to write some Python, that'll be good to go. Okay, with these good to go, all that's left is for me to head over to Dremio, which will be actually localhost 947. And the first time you see Dremio, you'll have to set up your initial user. So I will do that. I will set up a username of my name, Alex Merced. 
and my password will be password 2024. Okay, so 2024 for demonstration purposes. Nope. Now. Oh, I put too many twos. Okay, perfect. So when you first enter the Dremio UI, you're going to see this environment. And the idea is that if you're a Dremio user, you, this is where you can kind of see all the data that you have access to. Because again, the purpose of this is that you have data in many places and you kind of want to unify that so that way you can do much more easily work with your data without having to manage all these different connections within your scripts, all your data is kind of right here where you can curate it. So generally what we want to do is we want to add data sources and I can click over here on add source and I can add data sources from lots of different data sources. They generally fall into four categories, databases and data warehouses. So again, databases and data warehouses, these are going to be systems where we can interact with the data inside of them as tables. Okay. So if you ever work with like Postgres or Snowflake, all things that you can connect to Dremio, Basically, when you work with that, you see a series of tables that you can run SQL against. And everything in Dremio is SQL or SQL focused. And then you have object stores. So these are your data lakes. So this could be like an S3, an ABLS, Google Cloud Storage, where you see the data as files. And then you have your lake house catalogs, which are like Hive, AWS Glue, Nessie. These refer to data stored on your data lake but they allow you to interact with that data as if they were database or data warehouse like tables. And generally we can connect any of these kind of four sources. We're going to attach a few of these. So first off, we're going to connect our lake house catalog, Nessie. We're going to name that source lake house. And the endpoint is going to be this URL right here. So this is going to be the URL you're going to want to put in for that. No authentication for the way I have it set up. And then we're going to go to the second tab and I'm going to put as the bucket. This will put which bucket in our storage that we want to connect to, which is our data lake house bucket. Now we are using MinIO, not AWS S3. So, but MinIO is a S3 compatible data uh, storage. So I can now go put in my MinIO and admin or my MinIO password and username. And then all I have left to do is just kind of pass it some properties and to decrypt the connection. So you only would have this checked off if this was like a production setup with SSL certificates and such. Now, if I click here, I want to put S this uh, path style access property. I want to set that to true because that's going to make sure that Dremio can send the request to the right URLs. Then we're going to set the endpoint to tell it where Minio is running, which is Minio 9000. And then I want to turn on Dremio compatibility mode, which allows it to work with S3 compatible sources. Cool. I hit save. And now that is going to be set up. There we go. Good. Now we're going to want to connect our lake house or not. Well, we just connected our lake house. We want to connect our data lake, our storage. So again, MinIO is a S3 compatible layer. We'll call this lake for data lake. We put in our admin, password, it's basically the same information we just did with with Nessie for the storage layer, but except we're only connecting the storage layer. So the difference is when we connect our lake house, we're connecting our catalog and saying, hey, the catalog tracks the tables, but the tables are stored here, which is why we had to put two sets of credentials uh, on two tabs. Here, with it, we're only connecting the storage and we're going to interact with the storage as storage. So I'm saying here's my storage credentials. Again, compatibility mode because we're using MinIO, not S3, which bucket I want to default to. So that's going to be data lake. And then set up the additional properties. In this case, the path style access, just like we did before. And the endpoint pointing to MinIO. And that's it because the compatibility mode was taken up, taken place up there. And just making sure there's nothing else that I want to check off. And okay, good. And yeah. And now we have access to our storage. And you can see that once I connect that storage to Dremio, I can see all my different data types or all my different data files that I have on my data lake. Right now I have no lake house tables. So right now that's blank, but I do have uh, data files. 
And then last, what we can do is we can hook up our Postgres. Because again, we have that Postgres database running. So we'll call this just database, DB for database, Postgres. Uh, database is going to be called my database. This is also inside the Docker Compose files, and the credentials will also be admin and password. Okay, and then that should be all we need for this source. And then I can see the two tables that are inside of that Postgres database. And there you go, we're off to the races. We can now begin working with Dremio and seeing Dremio work. So that concludes this first video. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.